I'm going to show you how to create your own Minecraft minigame map system that will reset your maps whenever you're done with them. You'll implement this by creating a system which copies your original world folder and then puts it in a new place which the server will then load up and delete whenever it's done being used. Let's get started by taking a look at the game map interface. This is where we define all of the things that a map in our game will do. Our interface can do a few different things like load and unload the map as well as restore it from the original source material. It also has two methods to check if the world is loaded and then get the bucket world that be used in your game. Let's implement this interface now. This is the local game map class and it has a few different fields at the very top level. We have the source world folder which is the original source material for our world that we're copying from. We then have the active world folder which contains all of the files for our actively played world that's been copied from its source material. Finally we also have the bucket world which we can use to teleport different players into, modify, or change in any normal bucket way. To create a local game map the constructor takes in three parameters. We have the folder that contains all the worlds for our minigame. In my case, this is inside the plugins data folders game maps folder. We then have the name of the folder within the game maps directory. And then we also have a boolean which indicates if we should load or not load the world when we create a new instance of local game map. Now let's take a look at the load implementation. You'll see we create the active world folder right here by passing in the bucket world containers parent file as the root server folder. This is where we'd like our actively played map to be stored. And then we also pass in the name of our map which is source world folder get name and we also add some extra data here so that we know that this is a temporary world that should be discarded later. Adding this extra data to the world name just means we can look at it as the server operator and know this is a temporary world. So if it's still here after we've stopped our server we know something's wrong and we need to delete it manually. After we've created the active world folder we can copy all of the files in the original map folder into this active one to be played on using this file utility class which I've written. You can see the code for that copy method right here. First if the source is a directory then we want to go ahead and copy all of its files into the destination folder. We do that by looping over every single file inside of the source folder and then calling the same copy function back over again. If we are copying a file instead of a directory, we'll go ahead and start that copy here by creating an input and output stream, creating a memory buffer for our file content, and then passing that from the input stream into the output stream. To put that a little more simply, we're taking all the contents in the destination file, putting them all in memory, and then writing a memory into the destination file, and we've basically done a file system copy just like that. And then we just close our input and output streams because we don't need them anymore. So once we've copied all of the data from the source world folder to the active world folder, we can then talk to Bucket and load the world into the game. We do this by calling bucket.createWorld, passing in a new world creator using the name of our active world folder. After that, if we have been successful in loading our world it won't be null so we go ahead and turn off autosave because we know this is a temporary world and we don't want to save any additional data and then we just return this is loaded method call if the bucket world has not loaded and it's null this is loaded method will return false and otherwise if it is loaded and therefore not null it will return true Moving on to the unload method, you can see we unload the world using bucket, and then we also delete the world folder using the file util delete method. The delete method is super simple. If the folder is a directory, we need to delete all of its children by recalling the same method recursively, and then we just delete the file at the end of that loop to make sure that the directory and all of its children and maybe subdirectories are also deleted as well. Returning back to unload, after we've deleted our folder if it exists, we just set bucket world and active world folder to null to reset the state of our local game map. Finally, we have the restore from source method, which just calls the unload method and then calls the load method, which basically will delete our world and then make a new copy of it to be used in some other context. And that is the game map and local game map implementation. Before we're done taking a look at the map reset system, however, I'd like to show you how to create your own game map and set up the game maps folder inside of your plugins data folder. I've jumped over to my on enable method inside of my main class, where I create the data folder if it doesn't exist and then create the game maps folder inside of its data folder. After that, we can create a new local game map. I'm loading this from that game maps folder, which I've already created, by passing in the folder itself, the world name, which is Lighthouse, and then I'm also passing in true to load this world on the initialization of our object. With that, you're done making your map reset system. And now let's go ahead and test out the plugin on the server. I'll type the slash reset command, our world will reset, and then we can use the slash warp command to get right back in. And look at that, the subscribe button has been pushed. Make sure to do that yourself if you haven't already. And that's how to reset your minigame maps on your server. If you'd like to know more about how to do minigames in Spigot, I've got this video over here where I give you some must-know tricks about how to develop better minigame plugins.